Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. And without any further ado, oh boy, let's jump right into it. So, as you might have remembered, the last couple of days, <clears throat> the last couple of weeks have been... All over the place within the cryptocurrency space, the amount of price predictions that we've been getting, the amount of energy circulating, formulating, thinking about where Bitcoin's going, the rest of the cryptocurrency market, how high things are going to go, the predictions we've seen from early next year to April of next year to summer of next year, we have for years now. Um, had a large amount of speculation, and, and no, 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 and I'm, I'm going to take that word back. We've had a lot of news about governments buying and mining Bitcoin, holding Bitcoin, institutions buying, institutions mining, the amount of Bitcoin that's being gobbled up, stored away, hashed away somewhere. I'll tell you this completely honestly. Um... I think at this point, it is all but a given that crypto is here to stay. I think I've mentioned something like that before, but like I really need you to understand <clears throat> that a lot of the news that we're getting is significantly different than any kind of news that we got around 2017. A lot of people, and I say this in this way, I think a lot of people, even who may watch this channel... I think people tend to often hear the news, and you know it's it, it's understandable. There are thousands of things that we see per day. I there's a number somewhere. I I forgot the amount of like ads that we see per day. The amount of like things that we see on the street. Like it's literally like overwhelming to the human mind a lot of times. The amount of information that we take in and process every single day. So it is understandable if over the course of Eight years, you haven't remembered every single video that I made. I get it. I got it. It's understandable. But I think it's very important as well to try and hold on to and like retain, maintain a large portion of that information simply because of like the staggering news that we keep getting. When I keep and I and I mentioned 2017 over and over and over because not only was it a gigantic pivotal time. In the market, how many people we got into it, but it was also kind of like the, I think this thing could work kind of idea that started popping up in my head as far as where we could go, how big the market could be. And this is also once again around the time when like the first real predictions for Bitcoin began to come out. And I don't mean like the half a million dollar and all this other stuff. I mean, as far as like where governments were going to go, how things were going to play out, inflation, uh, markets collapsing and things like that, and how Bitcoin would kind of take over. And it's interesting to see that after all this time, like a lot of them, I mean, in, I, I, I guess in, in, in hindsight, hindsight is 2020, as we all know. But in hindsight, like, of course, this was all kind of going to happen, if I can say it that way. And without spending too time on too much time on this one topic, the entire idea of everything that we've been seeing over the course of the last two or three years has kind of solidified for me that crypto 1A is here to stay, that Bitcoin is like a major world player. But I still have all these questions of exactly how big it will be or how big it could be. When you think about just mathematically, time is very important. When you hear the news that almost all the Bitcoin is gone, I think the last estimates and numbers that we had about a month ago were like 1.2, 1.3 million Bitcoin, full whole Bitcoin, are available for 8 billion people on the planet. When you talk about all the accumulation that's happening now, the ETF hype, the having hype, the tens of thousands, I dare say, millions, low millions of people who are also buying every single day. It all adds up, and at some point, there literally will not be enough Bitcoin to go around, and this is when we get to those sky-high prices. Whatever. You you know what I'm alluding to, but it's it's always this, like, you know, we've gone to the point where if you're not paying attention, like, you're actively just trying to 
disagree or not really understand where all of this is going. It's 2023. We're not in 2028. We're not in 2032, logically. I mean, I'm, I'm sure all of you know this, but like, how big will this market be? How much wealth is going to be created from all of this? And like, like we're talking about like tens and twenties and thirties and tr- trillions of dollars that will solidify into this market over the course of the next decade or so. Like, think of like the life that people in crypto will be able to have. Imagine, here's the other side of it, the other side of the coin, the people who aren't paying attention. Like, it's always it's always this really weird thing. Like, even after 14 years, the fact that there are still skeptics, and that, which I can understand if you're not in the space. But if you're in the space and you hear news like this all the time, it's like, okay. Anyway, so the news is, um, this was very popular. Max Kaiser. Max Kaiser is similar to Mike Novogratz and similar to Jack Dorsey. He's like a hyper Bitcoin maximalist. Like he's Jack Dorsey kind of level, but he's far more eccentric in his ways. He's not as like leveled as far as Jack Dorsey, but you know, he kind of throws himself out there like as this character on on online. A lot of these people have very huge connections with wealthy people around the world. That is to say, they know wealthy people, they hear their discussions, they, you know. We've had a couple of times before in the past where Max Kaiser and a bunch of other people similar to him, like in that, I I hate the term upper echelon when referring to them, but people who are very rich because of crypto. They've told us before speculation and or news that they said that they knew was going to happen and a lot of times it actually did and that's what made this story actually incredibly popular it says well-known bitcoin maximalist max kaiser tweeted on twitter that qatar could be a big bullish driver for bitcoin's market cap Suggesting the rumors are getting very loud that apparently he claims to know that there are rumors, what have you, at least at the time of me making this video, there's nothing concrete. A lot of times when we've heard from other countries who've gotten into the space, it took a while, like there were always rumors, but it did take a while for it to finally like solidify. Like a lot of times we heard that there were countries who were actually dealing in Bitcoin. It took months, maybe half a year. For us to get the news that it was like a cluster of nine countries who are actually already using Bitcoin amongst themselves. We started hearing rumors about countries who were mining Bitcoin. Then we ended up getting information and news. I think there are like five. Like, I, like, like it's like from the government. Like it's not like people within that country. It's the actual government who's actively mining crypto. Apparently, there are now rumors that Qatar's country sovereign wealth fund could be looking to buy Bitcoin. And here's the part where it gets a bit ridiculous because apparently the rumor from Max Kaiser, as far as I can tell, is that they're looking to or would be looking to buy up to around half a trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin. Right. So here's the tweet right here. He said, the God candle, a $100,000 uptick in Bitcoin is in play. It will shift the global access of wealth and power in one tick. So the way that I understood this, the uptick is not that Bitcoin would pass by 100,000. It would be adding $100,000 to its current price if that situation actually ended up taking place. Not not even to mention the entire... And I, okay, I'm, I'm trying to stay on topic, but understand that this is a very interesting conversation to have when it comes to the idea of what wealth and power are going to mean in the future. I mentioned before a couple of other times uh, on Twitter and also in another video, uh, the amount of um, interest in NFTs never actually faded. And it reminds me, this is, okay, I'll tell you a little story. It reminds me of many, 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 many years ago. I want to even say like 2012, 13, 14, 15, somewhere around there. 
when I first kind of realized what art was, my idea of art for a very long time was the Mona Lisa, you know, Picasso painting, selling for a hundred million. I didn't think it was plausible for a normal person to be able to like get into art. And I'll say, you know, be able to spend 4,000 or so for something like actually major that slowly increases in value over time. And I remember telling people about like, oh my gosh, like we can get into art. Like we can have an art collection. We can grow art. You know, all these like things that kind of come with the idea of like, it's not just for the 1% of the 1%. Like we can all get into it in, 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 in our own kind of way and profit from it greatly. And no one listened. No, one, no, People just didn't pay attention because it was something so out of the realm of consciousness for them. Why would I? Why would I? Why would I do that? Art? I I can't afford any art. And then you explain to them that they you you can't afford it, and it doesn't doesn't resonate within their head because it's it's something so out of reach. It's it's like being like, oh yeah, when you wake up tomorrow, like we're like we're gonna make you king of England. You'll be like, what? I don't. Okay, I'm gonna walk the other way now. Same exact thing when it comes to like the digitization of everything, and me talking about. That, that uh, we have like national museums that are buying NFTs. It seems very abstract to a lot of people. Like it just doesn't make sense. It's the same exact way that I'm sure for many of you when you have told your friends or family members, hey, have you thought about buying some crypto? And they go, nah, I heard about that years ago. I don't, I don't want to touch any of that stuff. And you sit them down and you explain things to them and you get very frustrated because you want them to really see exactly everything that's going on. The trends that I see playing out from the perspective of not only someone in the cryptocurrency market, as someone who pays attention to the normal financial market, who pays attention to the actual uh, heavy movements of real estate and land. Like, of course, I don't know everything, but I try to keep myself as up to date as possible with like... Uh, corporate um, companies who are buying up, you know, 800 properties per month, 15,000 properties over the course of a year and other things like that. And the numbers that we get as far as like in the future, I think the estimate was just within the United States, I think in the year 2050, it's estimated between 60 to 70 percent of all property like homes will be owned by corporate landlords. The other 30 to 40% that's still floating around will be people who already own homes or who are their own smaller landlords. The idea then being that basically all the homes will kind of be owned by a very small, if you will, fraction of 350 million people. It'll be maybe only a million or two million who actually have the entire thing. And should new property be built or created, the demand for it will be so high that the only people who will be able to afford any new places are the companies who own 38,000 properties because of the rent that they're getting from it. They can say, cool, I want three more of those because I can afford it. When you talk about hearing about countries getting it, and, and I mean, even the gigantic question mark around Qatar, cool. Everything else that we've heard for those of you who missed it in the last like two or three days, the 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 amount of price predictions have been really intense. And like a lot of times, this is why even on the screen, I, I think, I believe a $100,000 Bitcoin is all but a given. With the energy around the ETFs, with the halving, the, there barely being a lot of Bitcoin left, the rumors now that are floating around, no one knows if this is going to come true are floating between a four hundred to a six hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin as the market reaches its crescendo sometime in twenty twenty five. The amount of wealth that will be created from that, and I and I mean this from the standpoint of if you end up making fifty thousand, one hundred thousand, two hundred thousand from the the coins that you're currently holding, Wealth is usually defined as like, or people believe it's like millions of dollars. Think of how many people you know have $200,000. Now imagine you get put into that situation comparatively just how much richer you are than those actual people. The way that things seem to be moving, at least for me, having trying to pay as much attention as I possibly can, 
everything is going to be digitized. We will still, of course, have normal art and paintings and drawings, but a lot of it is also going to be NFTs. There will be a couple of countries for a while who will probably still have paper money, but a lot of it is also going to shift into actual cryptocurrency as well, as we keep seeing more and more people around the world putting their money into Bitcoin and crypto all the time. And if you talk about the actual plausibility of a country like Qatar, and this is just Qatar, this isn't even the entirety of the UAE. This isn't talking about the amount of Bitcoin that the U.S. government already owns. For those of you who did not know that, Google it. The U.S. government has an egregious amount of Bitcoin that they like. We know that they have it like it's not it's not an assumption. These are a couple places. We're not talking about if they do it. If Qatar does it, how many other countries will be like, all right, let's let's allocate, you know, 10 billion into it. At least so we have something, especially when we keep getting news that there's only a million Bitcoin actively left out there for everyone else in the world to to buy. Like you 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 feel it, right? Like it's not just me, like all of you feel that something is changing. Something is really weird that like you can feel the pieces being moved around on the board and how much money people are going to be making. And yeah, I mean, I, I could keep going, but it's it's definitely, yeah. Um, and then he says, I have one word for you, $100,000 Bitcoin God candle fans. Qatar, the rumors are getting very loud on this. They're SWF rumored to be looking to buy half a trillion dollars in Bitcoin. And then there's two little videos also there as well. Kaiser's tweets immediately triggered a, a stir on social media with dozens of fellow influencers and news outlets quickly retweeting. And this is once again because people like him have mentioned things like this before and they've actually ended up coming true. The craziest part would be is that this this wouldn't be a normal situation. This would be like everyone into the pool at the exact same time. But there's only so much water that the pool can actually hold. Now imagine someone walking up to the pool and being the size of the pool and stepping into it. There's no room for anyone else to actually do it. As time will go on, of course, we will hear if these rumors end up being true or we will. There's always these uh, like these whale spotting things and Santiment and Glassnode who check things on chain who will be seeing if there's like, of course, they won't purchase it all in one go. But even if it's over the course of a three years in, in increments, it's going to have a very wide effect on the market. And this is still keeping in mind, there are hundreds of thousands, if not still millions of people who are actively buying Bitcoin all the time. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's, it's nuts what's happening. Like, it's completely insane that this is all happening right now. I told you guys years ago, like, for some reason, I was, I was expecting we have maybe, like, maybe five to ten more years of, like, taking it easy. No one's really paying attention. If we get to half a million dollar Bitcoin, it's kind of like, it's kind of like game over for everything else. Like, it's basically like one of those situations where you go, oh, my gosh, like, why didn't I do more to accumulate more? But that's also another topic for another time. Incredibly, incredibly popular news. Yeah, we'll see where that ends up going, because if that ends up being true, I mean, it's, it's, it's literally every man for themselves at that point. That's the potential Qatar news. And where the world is going as well, news. And yeah, let's move on. <coughs> you might have noticed uh, the extra energy in the air the last like week or so uh, also has to do with the idea of interest rates, something that we have not spoken about in a while. And I'm actually quite happy. Last year, and for the beginning quarter of this year, the idea of interest rate hikes was like, please stop. I was so tired of hearing it every single day. It was basically the idea that inflation keeps going up. If inflation keeps going up, the Fed, the Federal Reserve, the people who print the US dollar are going to have to continue raising interest rates. The problem is, is that the world's economy is like flimsy. 
it's not terrible, but it's also not amazing because the world essentially runs on debt. And the idea is that if the interest rates are too high, no one wants to take out debt. And therefore, you raise interest rates to lower the inflation, to kind of disincentivize, de-incentivize, make people not really want to take out debt in any sort of way. However, this has gone on for a lot longer than even the money printer people were kind of expecting. And it's gotten to the point where we heard this summer, this year, that apparently sometime next year, we might start seeing interest rates actually being cut. Now, this leads to a number of things, because a, a couple of other countries have already turned their money printers back on. Their, their economies aren't doing great at all. They've slowed down by a lot. Jobless, I, I told you the jobless numbers are also relatively fake as well. Like when you hear about them, it has to do with how many people are no longer applying for uh, jobless benefits or going to job center or trying to get, you know, unemployment, what have you. And as you can only usually apply a certain amount of times or over the certain length of a certain period, eventually it dries out and then they go, well, he must have found the job. So when interest rates actually fall, all the markets move up. And this positions us once again in that discussion where if Bitcoin's going to go up because of ETFs, if Bitcoin's going to go up because of the halving, if Bitcoin's going to go up because 93% of all the Bitcoin is being held by the whales and the rich, if they cut interest rates and the money printer turns back on and people begin to take out debt again because they can do it at a lower interest rate, this will also benefit Bitcoin as well. And this leads us into this really weird, like, perfect storm kind of situation that we're seeing unfolding right in front of us. It is a very fascinating time to be alive and also to see, like, actual history, like, unfolding before us just because of being in this market. I think we get a bit of a different perspective on the way that the world works understanding money a little bit more than other people that we, you know, pass by on the street, but then also like being able to benefit from it. Like it's only people in finance, in stock market, or in crypto who will benefit from these actual movements. Federal exchange member Christopher Waller, generally known for his hawkish attitude and statements, gave a signal for interest rate cuts. Speaking at an event in Washington, D.C., Waller said that inflation and moderate economic data are an indicator that the Fed is on the right track regarding interest policy. Therefore, the things that they've been doing, they say, have been working. Inflation is moving down slightly all the time, every single month. They've been pausing interest rates and not raising them. Raising them would be like, no, more has to be done. And after several pauses... The idea of them cutting it is like, let's see what happens to the markets and inflation should we actually cut rates. Stating that they will continue to monitor economic data in their previous statements, Waller stated that if inflation continues to decrease and economic data continues to be positive, interest rate cuts may be on the agenda, he said, and I do quote, Inflation rates are pretty much what I thought they would be and are moving in the right direction. I am increasingly confident that policy is now well positioned to slow the economy and return inflation to 2%. At this point, if the decline in inflation continues for a few more months, that is three months, four months, five months, we can start to reduce the policy rate, which is five months from now. Five months from now is the Bitcoin having. Why is everything lining up so perfectly? Five months, we can start to reduce the policy rate. He said this has nothing to do with trying to save the economy because they don't care about normal human beings. He said because there is no reason to say that we will really keep interest rates high. However, if there is an unexpected issue in economic data and inflation... Additional interest rate increases by the Fed will continue to be possible. At this point, an unforeseen upward shock could blow up the Fed's interest rate scenario, end quote. Yeah, 
This, of course, was incredibly popular news as well, as we have been undergoing over the course of the last two years very dramatic interest rate hikes and then a lot of freezes. And along with the freezes and the constant news that uh, Jerome Powell gets on stage and says, I think we're going to keep it where it is right now. The stock market's moving and also Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market are benefiting from it as well. Very fascinating time. Can you believe that it's been two years? It doesn't even feel like it. It's been two years since we've been going through the FTX fiasco, through all the cryptocurrency exchanges getting sued by the SEC, between interest rates rising and being frozen, the cryptocurrency market going down, it's now going back up. It's been two years. It is a, it's very, time is a very, very, very fascinating thing. That's the, by April, if inflation continues in the, in the direction that they want it to, they may begin to cut rates, which is only going to cause Bitcoin to go even crazier. That's the uh, Fed news. And yeah, let's move on. In, we haven't heard about this in a very long time. I was actually quite surprised that they were in the news. The United Nations has a development program, and apparently they have partnered with Algorand to provide their staff with blockchain knowledge and insights. Algorand is a chain that we do not hear that much about anymore. Algorand was very popular last year, I believe... I believe Algorand, I think it was Algorand, partnered with FIFA, F-I-F-A, the, uh, the, the football association, like the worldwide one. And I believe that they were meant to be like the chain of FIFA. I'm pretty sure it was Algorand. In a press release, the Algorand Foundation announced the launch of a blockchain academy to bolster the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, Staff capacity through education and training in blockchain. The Algorand, Algorand Blockchain Academy is set to launch in quarter one of 2024. It says it will provide 22,000 employees of the United Nations Development Program with recorded lectures and interactive workshops. Robert Pasico, expert on low-carbon development and alternative finance at UNDP, said the collaboration will be instrumental in equipping our team with the tools needed to address complex global issues using blockchain. Cool. I mean, it sounds like they're basically educating people. There's no actual news of the chain itself being used unless the recorded lectures and interactive workshops are going to be on the actual chain. Not really sure. It doesn't say a lot more about it as far as like, what they're going to be doing with the chain is more that the Algorand Foundation is going to be helping the United Nations. So that's something from a chain we haven't heard from in a while. Also, tying directly into it, uh, blockchain protocol Algorand has expanded its footprint in India by securing a new partnership with something called NASCOM, N-A-S-S-C-O-M, India's trade body and chamber of commerce for the tech industry, Thai Bangalore, a global venture supporting entrepreneurs, and the Mandeshi Foundation, which supports India's first rural bank for women. For those of you who are unaware, I am certain that India is the most uh, populous uh, country on the planet right now. Uh, over the last six or so years, the government has stated that they would give proper cryptocurrency regulation and they have not. Um, I assume that it has to do with the fact that uh, they have one point something billion people. It is estimated that around 10% of them... Uh, so they already have a huge tech sector, but it's believed that if the doors were kind of opened, around 10% of everyone in India uh, would get into crypto. That would essentially cause, legally, 100 million plus people to enter our markets, buy up our coins, prices go higher. However, the government, as many other governments, you know, they, they don't 
want people necessarily using crypto more than they're actually using the local fiat currency. This is the reason why I believe we have heard nothing but rumors from India as far as cryptocurrency regulation, and they still don't have it. But regardless of that, a number of cryptocurrency companies have actually moved into India, and this is where we currently are. Earlier this year, the Algorand Foundation branched into India with this initiative called Algo Bharat. The word Bharat represents the nation of India. At the time, Algorand partnered with Self-Employed Women's Association, SEWA, to support women-led enterprises, building blockchain solutions, and the, that's, I can't pronounce that, Jawaharlal, Jawaharlal Nehru uh, Technological University and the Indian School of Business to launch faculty development programs. It will now build out the Web3 capabilities of youngsters under NASCOM's Future Skills Prime Skilling... What? Who made this name? NASCOM's Future Skills Prime Skilling Hub, okay, and develop a blockchain-based credit scorecard and identity system for Mandeshi Foundations, Women Entrepreneurs, Algorand Foundation, C this is a long sentence, Algorand Foundation CEO Stacy Warden and India Country Head Anil Kakani told Coin that that's a lot in an interview. Cool. So they're also doing <laughs> That was a lot. They're also doing something in India as well. Um, I don't, I, I really, you know, it's cool that they're doing something. It doesn't appear that direct blockchain stuff is happening. They're using the Algorand Foundation for it. Uh, I guess we'll hear along the lines what's going to end up happening. They're making a, a credit scorecard, an identity system. I would assume they're using Algorand for the women entrepreneurs within the country. So I guess that's some kind of usage. It's not as gigantimous as we've heard for other projects out there who tend to have like other types of uh, countrywide uh, partnerships. But it's still something. We haven't heard from Algorand in a very long time. So it's nice to see uh, that they're still out there kicking. Yeah, that's the Algorand news. And yeah, let's move on. In, okay, uh, Unchained, a prominent Bitcoin financial su services provider, has released a new report showcasing an interest in the int surge. Oh my gosh. In the, in the surge? I'm so sorry. I can't read today. I have no idea what's going on. In the surge in Bitcoin ownership among Americans. Yes. Okay. Unchained released information talking about a surge in Bitcoin ownership amongst Americans. Everyone got that? I hope I did as well. According to their findings, Unchained has said that they believe that one in four Americans and 55% of those surveyed, defined by Unchained as those uh, with at least one investment account anywhere between the ages of 18 and 78 years old, own Bitcoin. They say one in four Americans owns Bitcoin, not crypto, Bitcoin. This was relatively popular. Whenever we have like statistics about things or who might own or what have you, it usually tends up being very popular. Like remember the news that we had before earlier this year, even last year, about um, how many countries in Europe like XRP and Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then we had another map that showed the United States. And I forgot what the most popular cryptocurrency was in the United States. It's not Bitcoin. It's not Ethereum. Was it XRP? It was either XRP or Cardano. I don't remember which one. But now they're saying that one in four Americans owns Bitcoin. When I looked around for the actual news and I found the number that they provided, I was like, oh, okay. The study apparently surveyed only 402 people. So they, sur yeah, see? Yeah, I heard someone say it as well. They surveyed 402 people out of 350 million people in the United States and revealed that 95% of current Bitcoin owners are considering increasing their holdings in 2024. 
why you would wait for 2024 when it goes up to half a million dollars as opposed to right now, I do not know. Remarkably, almost half of non-Bitcoin owners expressed a strong inclination towards purchasing Bitcoin within the upcoming year. Why, why not? Why now? Now is the what, what is wrong with people in timing? I, I, I don't completely understand. Key drivers influencing pot potential Bitcoin purchases in 2024 include increased regulatory clarity around digital assets or just do it right now. Bitcoin has proper regulatory clarity like you can buy Bitcoin. There's no risk of it being deemed a security or ever being taken off of crypto exchanges. Are people OK? Okay, with 42% of current Bitcoin owners and 35% of non-owners highlighting this factor. Are these actual investors or are these? Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm getting it. U.S. investors in general. It's not U.S. crypto investors. And I would assume, here's my assumption, near the number 78 years old, that's probably where we're getting people being like, oh, I want Bitcoin to be legal before I can buy it. Other influential elements identified were the potential approval of an ETF by the SEC and the anticipation of a U.S. economic recession. I mean, you know, good luck with that one. We've I've gone over that in so many other videos. People keep saying people have been saying that there was going to be a recession since 2009 like literally like the moment that one was like nearing its end or just gearing up people were like oh there's nothing ever going to happen so my my number my, my problem is, is is with the number 402 402 out of 350 million is not a lot um we get a a lot and th th this happens across the board if you ever hear anywhere it's not just crypto that someone did a survey and they're like 45% of respondents like said yes, like actually look into how many people they were actually questioning. If you talk to 402 people who are only investors, you are mathematically going to get a higher percentage of people who are also like investing. That just kind of makes a lot of sense. Now imagine if there was a website and it, it was, you know, and they got 150,000 people from all across America, every single state as opposed to people who were just investing. Of course, the numbers would look a lot different, but this was popular because the number 25% came up, one in four Americans. I have a feeling it's probably like one in eight, one in nine. I would assume they're on a younger spectrum as far as that goes. Um, there are not many people in my life over the age of 55 or 60 who can use a computer properly and or uh even like imagine like, no they can't navigate to coinbase like that's not even going to be a thing so cool good job unchained for releasing this survey that became quite popular but uh if you had like you know more people surveyed i i think we'd be in a whole whole different boat i think that's gonna do it for this video I do hope that you have, in some way, all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.